What's up, divas? What's up, divos? It's your girl, April, so you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday, which means it's Real Talk Wednesday or Tuesday, but tomorrow will be Wednesday, so it is what it is. Listen, oh, so first of all, I went and got my nails redone, and now they are like this pretty color pink nudish. I hate when my camera does not focus automatically. Like, I'll just be like, okay, come on, focus for me focus aren't they just pretty they got like a little glitter I think they're gorgeous look at that super cute like really really cute maybe I'm a little bit too close but they came out really nice they are the same nails that I have been wearing for the past five months, you guys. For the past five months, I have been wearing these same nails. So, I've gotten them reshaped. Like, they never were square, but they were more rounded. So, it seems like the more nail salons that I go to, it, the nail shape just gets better and better. Like, so the first one that I originally did them, they were really rounded. Um, Not really rounded, but I liked them, but they didn't seem like they were what I seen you know what I mean but I like them and they were really short I guess they couldn't be too rounded because they were I mean too almond shaped because they were really short but I've seen them really short and they were almond shaped but anyway this was like the bougie nail salon where they had the mimosa bar they give you free mimosas you know what I'm saying but it was very tiny it was like this tiny space um my daughter Tati started taking me there now, let's just say this. The mimosas was not all that. I mean, if you're going to serve some vodka, I'm your girl. But anyway, I went there a couple times. And then the next place that we went to, um, we went we went back to get our nails redone by them. But they were so crowded, they were out the door. Like, literally, they can fit, like, six people in the nail technician's desk. And then they have the feet part. Either way, it's a really small space. So I'm not about to wait like two and three hours for you and your free mimosas. So we went to this place that was just really brand new. Also, if you live out here in Avondale or Goodyear or Litchfield, it's um, next to the new fries on Camelback Row. And they're called Cuticles, Cute Nails, Cuticle Nails or something. Cuticle Nails, like cute, something like that. Well, the girl who always does my nails in there, her name is Becky. I call her Becky with the good hair. I feel like that's my best way of remembering anything. Now, their establishment is really nice. It has enough space and it. it's really roomy. You can get like a lot of nail girls done. Um, but they're not giving you no free mimosas. And if for the price, they ought to give you some free mimosas. Now, I went to them twice. She did my unicorn nails. That's what she called it. Um, okay. Um, they were hierographic, holographic um unicorn nails and then the second time she did my gay pride paint splash nails so i went there twice i got tired of paying the price so um so that was nail time number three meaning i got these nails done three times the first place that originally did them and then the becky with the good hair place that's three times so then the fourth time i was like you know what i'm not about to continuously pay her 58 dollars to just redo my nails like you ain't doing nothing but filling them in and you may reshape them a little bit but the little designs that you do i'm not about to pay you 58 dollars so i decided to go somewhere where my bestie rebecca always goes she said you know they're cheap they're like 14 dollars to get your nails done like a complete set or something like that really cheap and they're asians and the ratchets come in there like you know what i'm saying like the hookers and the prostitutes so she said it's always like lit up in there basically um, her exact words were not lit but you know us as older people we use like different words but it damn near boils down to it be lit up in there she, the scenery is funny she says but the wait may be long and it's probably long because of the prices so i went there i just so happened to go there one day when i was dropping my son off to work so the longest that i waited i think was like 20 minutes so this guy, this gay Asian guy, does my nails. Uh, and he did pretty good. He shaped them. And, you know, he took them off. And he did really, really good. And I paid $25, $23 because they were gel nails. You know, so I, I like the gel polish. So it lasted really long. Um, that was the third place that I went to. And that was, that was the fourth refill. And I was going to go back there last week because they had grown out. And I had them on for like a month. And they had grown out. And I was like, you know what? I really don't feel like sitting down there waiting, especially because it is a 
Thursday evening uh, or Friday. It was a Thursday or Friday evening. I think it was a Thursday evening. Thursday. And I was like, I'm not about to sit there and wait for like to pay $25, $23, $23. So I was like, I'm going to try this other place next to Sam's Club, which is kind of like in the same area. But um, me and Tati never, we we knew, we read it. It said that, the, um, you know, the comments were good. The prices was good. So we went there. I went there. Me and Mumsy went there. And um, the best part about it was when I walked in, there was like open tables. Like definitely. It was a small space also. But you know what? This was the place. This was the fifth refill. And this was place number four. And... Um, the price for the refill and the gel nails was $26 there. A couple dollars more. And it was way faster. And he reshaped them. His name is Tommy. Um, he reshaped them to be perfect. Like, this is the shape that I have been wanting for so long. So I was really happy about that. Um, yes. And, the, and I was in and out in, like, probably, like, I want to say 45 minutes. I was so happy. Listen, I don't really like to sit and get my nails done. I don't like getting my nails done. So I am very surprised and proud of myself that I have held these on for five freaking months now. Okay? Five months. Because a bitch like me be like, listen, I got to make some wigs. I got to make wigs. I got to make wigs. I don't have time for nails. And I don't have time to be sitting there and letting somebody drill into my nail bed. Like, I'm not cool with that. I used to love to go get my nails. But I stopped getting my nails done when... um airbrushing was still popular you know i would have those crazy designs so you can only imagine how long it's been you know i may have my nails done every now and then maybe like one month out of the year it'll last me for like three weeks then i'll take them off because i've had my nails done a couple of times but listen this is the longest and i've gotten kind of used to using them to make wigs so that was the main reason why i didn't want to get my nails done because i got to make some wigs okay yes so anyway, other than that, that is how my life has been. Nothing new has been going on. I mean, some things have been going on new, and I'm definitely going to share that with you guys. So I came back last night, Monday night. Fuck it. It was Tuesday because it was like 12, 15 a.m. Um, from Vegas, from a Vegas trip. And I actually went to Vegas mon Saturday morning. Okay, it was Saturday morning that I went. And it was for a convention. This convention. Hello? Hello? Okay, goodbye. So anyway, sorry about that. This convention basically was for wholesalers. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you got a business, if you, you have a retail store, if you have an online business, if you got a Facebook business, if you got a Twitter business, when any type of business that you got where you're selling some shit to make some money, you should have been at that show. So it was the ASD um, show. And basically, it was in Vegas, and it was for, I think it was a five-day convention. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is the last day. So... Huge convention. It was really, really cool. Um, it was a five-day convention. All of these vendors from all over the place were there um, showcasing their stuff. There was um, one side that was really huge. Like, the whole place was humongous. Um, there was one side where it was just, like, the wholesalers, the vendors. So they all had their booths propped up. They had all of their items, new coming items, new, new um, companies, whatever you can imagine. It was there. And it was so amazing because on this portion of the, one side of the building, it was just where you can go and you can you can talk with these vendors, look through their inventory, and then they take your order down and they'll have it sent to you. Okay, of course you don't have to pay for this, but you would sit down with them, tell them how much you want of one thing and whatever. You look through it. They had catalogs, but they would mainly have like a bunch of their stuff. You couldn't buy it like buy it and take it home at that moment there on that particular side. But it was probably like, I want to say probably like 200 vendors on that one particular side from everything. So when we went in, of course, I wanted to go to the beauty side. Okay. And my friend, she sells jewelry wholesale, like not jewelry, but the materials 
for to make jewelry like beads and stuff like that so she wanted to be there this was her venture I was invited along she asked me did I want to go and I was like down for it, you know um, so we went to the beauty side and oh my god there was LA girls booth and when I say booth I don't mean like no little ass booth where you're like well um, shit can um can you move over so I can see what they got no, they had, like, these booths were set up really, really nice. And I'm pretty sure you guys um, are well aware of that. Okay, so, which was crazy was um, NYX was there, LA Girls, LA Colors, which is the same company, um, Absolute New York, um, Cara Cosmetics, um, Eyelashes, uh dang um damn and i'm there i know I'm, I'm like clean color um this new company that's up and coming called rude cosmetics um it was like so many makeup companies there and i was just like amazed of course like i said you couldn't buy anything but i do have footage of the whole event and i'm definitely going to make a video of that because i was given some information that i'm pretty sure you guys would like to share or i would like to share with you rather i'm sorry in case you're interested um then on the other side, that was the side where you could just look and see and look through their inventory, try the samples out, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was able to talk to a lot of the cosmetic ones, and they was like, you know, wh what do you do? And I had to, you know, I told them what I did, and they was like so interested. They was pulling me up on their phones and stuff, and they was giving me their cards because I guess they want to send me stuff. So what's crazy about it is... All of the owners, like to these companies that you see, like NYX, LA Colors, LA Girls, Clean Colors, Absolute New York, Cream Cosmetics, um, all of these are really, really low end cosmetic companies are owned by Asian people, which is fine, you know what I'm saying? Who cares who it's owned by? But it was just like really cool to be there and see and meet these people. But also on the other side, you know, like you, you're seeing all of this shit and, and when you see the stuff, they'll have like one item, say they have, they'll bring like a hundred items, a hundred different items. And for each one item, they'll have like 10 things like, so it's looking like they want to sell this shit, but they can't. So on the other side is the cash and carry, they call it side, where there's a bunch of other vendors and wholesalers who are also doing the same exact thing, allowing you to look through their inventory and write down what you want and giving them your list so that you can have it or you can buy shit right then and there. You don't have to buy wholesale like a bulk load of it. You can buy one item. You can buy two items, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I was like in fucking heaven because you guys remember maybe some of you do some of you don't but before i had my wig website and before i was making wigs for a living and selling wigs i had my jewelry website where i made jewelry and then i also bought a wholesale never in my life have i seen so much stuff that is amazing and was like oh my god i just really wish that i would have just continuously stayed with my jewelry making website i still have all of my jewelry like boxes and boxes of jewelry supplies of uh, jewelry itself already made you know in my garage packed up and it's like damn april you i just want to stick with one thing you don't but anyway the whole moral of the story is listen I had a really great time when I had to venture off onto my own. Meaning, and I'm pretty sure that you guys, some of you guys have seen my picture on Instagram where it was like mood, bothered, as f annoyed as fuck. Let me tell you something. I'm all for making friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you guys have heard me say that in quite a few videos how, you know what I'm saying? I'm an introvert. I don't have many friends. The only friend I have is my bestie, Rebecca. And I love her to pieces. She's leaving me to move to LA. I wish she wasn't, but you know what? It's a hop, skip, and a jump. And I will walk there if I have to, just to be hanging out with her. You know what I'm saying? So it's me and her are good cop, bad cop. We share the same, but we're able to be in each other's presence all the time without one of us being the fuck annoyed. I was very annoyed on this trip, okay, to the point where I had to leave the person that I was with, okay, which is not my bestie, Rebecca, and walk off to the other side of the cash and carry side. I got motherfucking tired of hearing about beads, beads. I just got tired of hearing about it. And I'm pretty sure she's going to see this video because she met me, like I said, out in public, and she knew who I was. That's fine. 
but heartfully when I met her I knew she didn't have any ill intentions which I'm pretty sure to this day she doesn't but some people's characters and personalities just don't work and I'm I, you know what honestly I would hang out with her still but not out of town okay I would definitely not go on another road trip until I really, really thoroughly get to know her because I'm the type of person, it's not that it takes, it doesn't take much to annoy me, but some things I'm just not with. I'm just not with. Honestly, some things I'm just not with. I have kids and I miss my kids so much on that trip, okay? And the whole time that I was there, it was like, you know what? This is not the shit that I do. Like, I can't deal with certain shit. And I was just like, basically wishing that, okay, I wish my daughter, Tati, Mumsy, and Nay was with me right now. And my son, Wuzzle. And we were doing this together. Even though we don't sell the things that was there, I still enjoyed the atmosphere, you know what I'm saying, and being able to experience it. So I will do this on my own the next time. But I just was so missing my kids because you ever notice like when you're around your family, maybe certain family members, they're they're acceptable to you. You can totally 110% be yourself without even having to worry about what they may think of you. You know what I'm saying? And like that's how I feel when I'm with Rebecca too, the same exact way. Um, with this trip, it wasn't that. It just was like, you know what? To me, our personalities kind of clashed and there were things that I had to tell her about the type of person that I am. And I honestly did not intend to hurt her feelings when I told her the type of person I am. Bottom line, by the time, I, I did say that on Monday I wanted to be home like by, hold on you guys. Okay, I don't even remember where I was at because my son was texting me, but like I was saying, you know, I wanted to be back home Monday at like by at least five, six in the evening, okay? Because I got kids that I just want to be with. I don't really want to leave my household for too long. You know, I could explain to you guys a million and one reasons why I just needed to be home by a certain time. Okay, so we did go back to the convention on Monday because, you know, it was so much grounds to be covered and so much walking that one would get tired and hungry. And we did go to a really great buffet. And, you know, most of the time, 100% of the time, I wasn't irritated. But so the day that we were supposed to leave and come home, we um, we did have a late start, meaning it, it reopened. The convention reopens at 9 o'clock in the morning. We were supposed to be back there at 9 o'clock in the morning. I got up and got dressed and stuff, and we got there. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Okay, so now we're behind whatever by the time we got out of the convention it was like i want to say like 1 30 2 o'clock ish it was like 1 30 okay so like 1 30 ish of course you want to get something to eat because straight from the convention was time to come back to arizona so we stopped we got something to eat um, you know, we sat there. It was probably like a 45 minutes sitting there. We sat there. We went to this cake place because they're supposed to have the best cakes in Vegas. I don't know about all of that. The carrot cake was amazing, but that seven layer cake that I brought home was dry as a motherfucking desert sand. Okay. And it wasn't cheap. Anyway, we had to stop off on the way to Arizona just to pick up a family member or whatever of my friend's. Long story short, while we were there waiting for her family member to come on and let's go back to Arizona, we ended up being there for three fucking hours at, at least. All right? Let me tell y'all something. I understand that everybody has some bullshit going on in their life, but I don't never want to be in the middle of it and or a part of that shit, especially when I get want to get home. Bottom line, let me just tell you this. I was so motherfucking irritated that I didn't get home until like 12.30 in the morning. My kids are sitting there waiting for me outside. I was so irritated, so motherfucking irritated. I was ready to jump out the motherfucking car on the way back and be like, let me just call an Uber for a three-hour drive back to Avondale, Arizona. I would have took an Uber. You ever be somewhere with somebody where you get just so motherfucking irritated that you just can't take it? On top of that, of the irritation of that, I had, was messing with my phone. 
and I had put some setting on in my phone to where the phone just kept talking. Every time I would click an icon, it just would just fucking keep talking. And it was so irritating. I didn't know how to get it off. I had restarted my phone like three times. And then finally, I was able to call Tati by fucking with it. And it was Tatiana. And it would read the phone number out, read the last phone call we had, how long it was, what time it was. It was so irritating. Then finally, it would say, calling Tatiana. Okay, I had to talk to my daughter. She had to Google it and walk me through how to remove that fucking shit that I had put on in my phone in the settings. I could have just went back to the settings, but it was not allowing me to. Anyway, that and the irritation was just like so fucking irritating to me. I'm on the phone with my daughter in the car. I'm talking. I'm not whispering. I'm talking. I'm in the passenger side. And I was like, I'm so irritated right now that I really feel like Throwing this fucking phone out the window, like, I could feel, like, the anxiety in me rising to, like, the top of my chest. And I just kept moving in my seat and unbuckling the seatbelt. Um, first, I had to fight with it to get it off. And I just was like, oh, my God, Tati, I'm really irritated right now. I just feel like throwing this phone out the window and jumping out behind it, being like, give me my stuff because I'm about to take an Uber all the way back home. Tati was like, just turn your phone off and it'll be okay. I was like, no, I'm not about to turn my phone off. You'll be here in no time. No, I won't. It's like two and a half hours away from now. Okay. That's how irritated I was. And you know what? It's not that I'm trying to be a Debbie Downer because I'm really, really not. I'm definitely not trying to be a Debbie Debbie Downer. But I tell you what. I really wanted to get away and I really wanted to enjoy myself and play nice as an adult and make friends. But I guess that I'm just not destined to have but so many associates in my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I guess I'm really not. The best thing for me to do is this. You know what? Even in a relationship with a man, the right one is going to come to you when you least expect it. Okay? And sometimes when you want something so bad. You see something and you gravitate to it and it'd be the wrong thing because you kind of go in blindly and because you want that so bad. So like with me, I wanted to make more friends out here and I wanted to get out more. And because I wanted that so bad, I kind of like was like when I met this person, I was just so overwhelmed and happy about it that, OK, yes, I found somebody to be my friend who probably likes me really for me, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, let's hang out. We're going to hang out. You come over. She came over here. I came over there, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'll go to Vegas with you, whatever, whatever. Not knowing that I kind of like went in by blindly. Don't get me wrong. She's a wonderful person. She has a really great attitude. You know what I'm saying? But we just, to me, some of the things just kind of like irritated me. And I think for my own safety, that if I am invited to go out of town with somebody, bitch, we need to really know each other. I need to be your friend for at least a motherfucking year. Not no goddamn week and a half, two weeks. That's not long enough for me. Okay. But I will definitely, definitely um, do a video. I wanted to do this video about the Vegas trip. Um, and I'm going to show you like shit that, you know, was at the convention. And then I'm also going to give you some information, you know, but I wanted to show you guys something real quick. So you guys know that I love fucking flip flops. I'm the flip flop queen. Did I get some uh, flip flops at the convention for the cash and carry side? The guy is so nice. He uh, ended up get, give me his information, taking my number and stuff because we he wanted me to he wanted to send me some stuff to do videos for him for. So I was like, okay. But look, so these were two for ten dollars at the convention center. I was so happy because I wanted some blinged out flip flops for the longest, but I, the ones that I kept seeing were just like not really like that interesting. I wasn't like, yes, I need those. I need those. They were cute. You know, they was at Walmart or Target, but these are so cute. I really wish they were um flat, like didn't have a wedge. Don't be um surprised if you see a tutorial of how to make your wedged flip-flops be flat because I love flats. Oh my god, I like my flip-flops to be a little flatter. But whatever, you know what I'm saying? We are going to try these out. Oh. I think he gave me the wrong size for this one. Yes, 
he motherfucking did. I'm not too happy about that now. Anyway, so now I'm going to have a flip-flop. that I'm going to give these to Rebecca because she loves these type of flip-flops. So I'm going to have to give these to Rebecca. And I'll have to keep this pair. That sucks because the really bejeweled pair I wanted. Oh, well. So anyway, yeah, so let's get on to this real talk, bitches. Um, because I have so much things to do and so much things to catch up on. You know, I've been gone, so I haven't been able to post any videos. I didn't get to post any video for, oh, they do fit, for Monday and Monday and Tuesday, which really sucks. So definitely, definitely, um, yes, they do fit. I will... Um, get that video out for you guys so on that note if you have a real talk video that you want um published talked about whatever you want to call it you can go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please put in the subject line real talk and on that note let's get into this real talk okay. y'all like before <laughs> april are you gonna be doing your makeup in this video not today I, my face is broken out like it's not even broken out it's like little Bumps looks like little rashes on my face because I think I need to clean my makeup brushes. So, and it always gets like that when I need to clean my makeup brushes. My makeup doesn't look that great. So, yeah, I'm not going to be... The only thing I have on is some eyeliner and um, some powder on my brows and my new lashes. I did my lashes today. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell from the camera, but they are like, look. So, I need to get in closer. And I will have them on for like two weeks, okay? So, you guys want to stare at my lashes. That's cool. Um, I did use some strips and my individual, so... Yes. Yes, I do like them. They look really nice up close and personal, though, so... And everybody's always commenting me on my lashes. You know what? The one thing I hate, though, is when people comment me, and they'll be like, I love your lashes. Where did you get them done? Like, damn, bitch, I just can have long lashes. Or how about this one? And then we're going to get into real talk. So I'm at the convention, and there's two black ladies come up to me. They older. They, like, probably my age. They my age, okay? So the one lady was like, oh, I love her hair. I had on my kinky straight half a wig, okay, um, that I had got from her giving hair. And I had my little headband on with it. You know, the one y'all see me in a couple of times, many enough times. It was real human kinky straight hair. And it's, like, right to here, and it was, you know, it was straight. So, then I have a little headband on with it. It's too fucking hot. So, she was like, I like your hair. And I was like, thank you. She was like, what kind of hair is that? I was like, excuse me? She was like, I like your hair. I was like, yes, thank you. She was like, well, what kind of hair is that? I was like, I'm sorry. What kind of hair is it? She was like, yeah, what kind of hair is it? She's looking at her friend like, I said, and what makes you think that it's not mine? Is there any way, indication for you to think that it's not mine? Like, do you see anything? Well, I just, you shouldn't assume. Now, I would have been more than happy to tell her what it was or whatever. But the mere fact is, do you bitch think that I don't have no motherfucking hair? What, I would never in my life be so rude as to say, what kind of hair is that? That would, what if I would have been like, bitch, this is my motherfucking hair. And I just left it at, at what I asked her and said to her, you know what I'm saying, and walked the fuck off. Like, there were some moments that I was just, like, really astonished by, okay? Like, you couldn't only imagine. I'm, I was standing at this one booth that sold blinged out flip-flops, too. Now, mind you, I'm standing here, and where they have their little display, it's probably, like, this wide, okay? Probably, like, this wide. Isn't that wide? But they Because they have a whole bunch of other shit. So, the one display that I was looking at was, like, that wide and whatever, and... Okay, so this is me, and the display is probably like three feet in front of me, and I'm looking at the stuff, the flip-flops, because I'm just like amazed at this display. I'm ready to go buy some flip-flops. This, did this motherfucking white bitch come and walk in between me and the display? Not that it would have been that big of a deal if you would have kept it pushing, because I was just standing there like really gazing at the shit. Nah, I thought she was going to keep it pushing. This bitch... Fucking came and walked right in front of me and just started looking at the motherfucking flip-flops. I was like this. That was me like, is this bitch serious? I know she's not really trying me right now. So I was like, and listen, I'm not trying to embarrass nobody while I'm out. I'm like, oh shit. 
And I'm like, you know what? I really don't want to get kicked out of here and embarrass my friend. So let me tone it down a little bit and give her the filtered version of me. I was like, um, excuse me. I had to say it two times. And I was like, hello. And then she turned around and smiled at me and turned the fuck back around. And didn't say nothing and continuously stood there and looked at these motherfucking flip-flops. So here come her motherfucking daughter. Because the lady was probably like 55, 60, 55 at most. Oh, she, I'm like, I know you're really not going to stand there while I'm in front of me like this. Her daughter comes, I'm sorry, she just, her hearing is bad. I was like, her hearing is bad? You didn't say nothing about her eyesight. Did she not see me standing right here looking at them flip-flops and then she just want to get right in front of me? I'm sorry. She just can't hear really good. I was like, you didn't hear what I just said. And I said, you know what? And I walked off. She tried to kept explaining her stuff, but I was like, it's best that a bitch like me walk the fuck off. That was incident number one at the show. The second day I was on the phone. And this lady, she sold, this Asian lady, she sold these bomb-ass clothes for $5. So I'm in one of her aisles that she got. She got a rack set up. And the aisle's like this motherfucking big. Like, I'm just fitting in it. There's room if you want to walk past me. But you best say excuse me. So I'm at in the aisle, right? And there's like four of them. This um lady comes through with a scooter. You know, like a scooter that be in the grocery store. You can rent them there. So I'm already in the aisle. And, um... The back of the aisle is like a curtain, which is on the other side. So that's her backdrop. You know what I'm saying? That's separating her from other vendors or the walkway. So I'm looking through the stuff and I'm on the phone and I'm looking through the stuff. And I see this lady in a scooter coming in the aisle. I don't pay no mind because she's looking at the stuff too. She keeps coming closer to me and I'm like, okay, well, this bitch came so motherfucking close that I had to back up some more. Like, are you, is you about to run my motherfucking feet over? I ignored it because, once again, I'm trying not to be April, April. She going to say to me, I'm trying to get, would you, no, would you like to switch places with me and you come on this side and I come right there? And I was like, well, how is that even possible when there's barely no room in this aisle and you damn near ran my ankles over? What are you trying to back me into a wall? The best thing you could say is, excuse me. And she was like, just looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, have the motherfucking aisle. I had to go through the lady's backdrop and through the walkway just to get the fuck out of the aisle and away from that bitch without smacking her in the scooter. Smacking that bitch in the scooter. That's what I'm going to name this motherfucking video, okay? Because, listen, I'm going to tell you what. There is no wait reason... For people to be so motherfucking rude. And I'm going to just leave it at that. Okay? We're just going to leave it at motherfucking that. Dead ass. So, let's get into this real talk. Hello, Miss April. I changed the name, so don't worry, girl. But I recently got an, I recently got in an issue and thought you can help me. Recently, my ex, let's call him Steve, who's 24 and I'm 20, hit me up saying he wants things to work out and to meet up. Me and Steve have been on and off because he's been too busy to hang out with me and I've been busy with school and work. Well, when I scheduled a date and time to hang out, he would say, okay, and when the time comes, he will make up an excuse of why we couldn't meet. So I would reschedule about three to four times again and again. So three times and again, the day and time comes, he tells me, sorry, not today because whatever. So I said, fuck it and said, maybe another time. And he never responded. Late July came and he just recently gave me a bunch of emoji hearts on my pics. So basically he was going on her pictures, probably like on social media, and putting the emoji with the heart eyes, okay, on my pics. And all I said was thanks. And I was thinking of giving him a second chance. We started talking more and more. And so one night I prayed to God saying, is he the right one for me? That same night after I prayed and went on Facebook, I don't know what made me think of this, but I seen a girl tagged him saying they're in a relationship since June. No, I didn't see this tag on his page before. Pull his status says single. When I went on her page, she tagged him in everything, but he never liked it. And he hid it from his page so others, like me, can't see it unless you go on her page. Sorry for being so long, but should I send her the messages he was sending me when they were together? 
or just let it go and move on. Please note, after this incident, I never responded to his messages again. I just made a post on Snapchat saying, it's funny how you were in my inbox this whole time and you had a girlfriend. He's seen it in like two minutes after I posted it and never texted me or called again. I don't want to be petty if I send her the messages he sent to me because that's not my character. But I do feel bad because she is a single older mother, older than him, looking for love. And I don't want to be the Grinch, but I feel like if I was in her situation, I would not I would want to know. I'm having doubts because my friends say it's not my place and sooner or later she will find out. Please, Miss April, help me and tell me what to do. Wow. So y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. My girl, we're going to call her, um, we're just going to call her Marie. Marie has been dating Steve on and off. He's 24, she's 20. He always making excuses of why they can't meet up and hang out like they normally would do. And not even normally would do, but, you know, he's busy doing what he's doing. And she's busy going to school and working and stuff. So they would make a date for something, and then he would come up with a reason why he couldn't meet up with her. She would reschedule another reason another reason so you know she do like him she really feeling him i guess because she keeps giving him different chances and more chances and more opportunities well she did come across his facebook page you know what i'm saying um one day after praying to god asking god is he the right man for her and that very same evening she went on his facebook page and she saw the answer to her god daggone prayers Listen, now one thing is like this. I'm not a really religious person, but I will tell you this. Things are meant to be seen when they are to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Like I always say, I'm not a really religious person. The way you may believe, the way you may believe in God may not be the way that I believe in God. And I'm fine with that. And I'm fine with whatever your beliefs are because everybody is, everybody is entitled to how they feel about anything. Okay. But I do believe that God, whatever you may think God may be, he could be a cow, a moon, a duck, a person, whatever you may think God is. I do believe that God will always show you the light or give you the answer that you are looking for or may always help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I feel about my life and myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. I've never been homeless and I have always struggled, not always, but I have struggled a lot in life and always wonder why I don't have the things that I have, no matter how hard I try, things have been taken from me, et cetera, et cetera. But God has always made sure that me and my kids have stuff and that we don't have to struggle too hard. Okay. And he always gives me the answers to things. They may not come when I want them to come like automatically, but they do come. And that I know is a God. There is a God. Okay. Regardless of what you may feel their form, their shape or form is. So when she went, when Marie went after prayed and went on his Facebook page, did she find Steve being tagged in pictures from another chick? Okay. All these pictures um, that he was tagged in, but he was hiding them saying that they were in a relationship. Now she want to know, you know what I'm saying? Should she tell this woman who is a single older mother of, you know what I'm saying? Or should she just let it be? Because in her eyes, she don't want to be the Grinch. She don't want to feel like she's hating. She don't want to be like a trouble stir. But then her friends are telling her, you know what? Just leave it alone. That's not your place. I am on the fence about this one. Meaning I'm all for telling this woman because I have been there and done that and had to. And then I'm all for just saying, you know what? Some things are meant for you just not to do. To do. Sometimes you got to learn how to shut the fuck up and mind your own business. I get it. Okay. I'll give you a prime example of myself and why I say I've been there and done that. A long time ago. This was a long time ago. Okay. This was before I, um, did I meet my own? I think this was before my husband. Yes. Right before my husband, right before I met him. Okay. There was this guy that was trying to kick it to me. All right. He was trying to kick it to me and whatever. He wasn't bad looking. He wasn't no baller, but he wasn't bad. Looking. He looked decent. Okay. And he gave me his number and I gave him mine. Now I know I didn't have a cell phone at the time because I started 69 this lady. She called my phone as black woman and she asked me about him. And she was like that. Well, I found your phone number. I can't remember word for word, but basically she asked, she said something in regards to, she found my phone number and he tried to tell her that it wasn't nothing like that, that he knew me 
um, from his friend. I was messing with his friend or something like that. Something in that perspective. And I was like, yeah, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't want him. And, you know, basically I played it off for those couple of minutes and told her that. And she was like, oh, okay. I just was wondering. I was like, no, that's not what it is. So within five minutes, I had to sit and think about it. And then I started 69 her and call, got her phone number and called her right back and told her everything. Okay. There was nothing really to tell her because we did not have any type of intimacy or nothing like that. We didn't go out. We just exchanged numbers and he had called me a few times. He was kicking it to me on the phone. You know, basically he was trying to kick it. And I told her all of that. And she was like, you know what? You are a real woman for even telling me any of this and calling back. I did finally get to meet her in public, you know, one day. And she thanked me and she said that I saved her from him basically because he was a dog. So that part of me was happy that I did that because it helped her. And so that's the part where I'm like, damn, if it were me, if I was the girl on the other shoe, like if I was that single mother and I was with this guy and I just wanted love, I would definitely want someone to be like, look, girl, watch out. He a user. He a liar. He this, he that, he this, he that. Because some people will not, you know what I'm saying? Well, some people just will feel like, oh, he's everything. He's just, you know, you're going for everything he's saying. Meanwhile, he's shucking and ducking you, shucking and ducking and fucking you, and he's using you. You know, he's taking from you and your children, but you're still just in love with him, and you're not really listening to this. But then it's some people that will take that information that you give them, like, yeah, your man was with me, and here are the messages, and then she'll probably be like... Girl, please, you a hater. You just want him because she'll feed into what the guy is saying. Honestly, it could go both ways, Marie. You could tell her this information and you could show her the proof. And she could take it for what it's worth and say, you know what? I appreciate what you just told me. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then it could work into your favor where this lady is like, fuck you, bitch. You need to mind your business. You just hate it, et cetera, et cetera. And then she tells him and he starts agreeing with her. And then he starts harassing you through social media. So, you know what I'm saying? Or she could tell him and believe you. And then he could still yet harass you. So it's like a win, win, lose, lose type of situation. Just. For safety's reasons and for keeping out of the middle and other people's bullshit, I would agree with your friend on that one. I would just say, you know what? Some things are meant for you. Some things are meant for you to tell everybody. Sometimes you have to just learn how to keep it zip and continue on, even though you would want it to be the opposite way if it were you. Sometimes what we want is not always best for us. You know what I'm saying? You don't know from what can stem from you telling this lady. Just be thankful and happy and glad that God showed you the way out of the situation. You understand what I'm saying? He gave you an enlightenment by looking on Facebook and was, you were able to see like, Oh, this nigga ain't shit. I'm glad I see this post. That was my answer right there. God gave you your answer right there. Okay. Maybe that's what was meant for you not to further it because everything is meant for somebody. And even though you took your answer from God and you did what was right for you, the next step of you telling this lady might not be what was meant in your cards or in your favor. So as bad as you want to help her, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to leave things alone because it's going to fester to the top is going to bring itself to a head. You know, like a pimple, it'd be just marinating under your skin. You know what I'm saying? Pimples take a while to build out of your skin. They marinate for um, a while. You know what I'm saying? They still under your skin and they, they fighting to get to the surface. It's coming through. It's coming through. And then it finally comes to a head and then it busts. It's the same thing. That shit is going to fester and she's going to see her signs because if she's a single mother, then she may not be as naive as you may think. People become naive when they want something and she's looking for love. And that's where she's naive at because she's picked the wrong one. Just like with me, I was kind of naive in, you know, finding friends. And I'm not just talking about this situation that just happened. I'm talking about past situations with Nicole, breaking my windows, etc. I wanted a friend. Now, 
in this situation, you want to tell this lady, listen, he ain't no good. Like I said, it can go all the way left. It could go south, it can go east, north, whatever, or it can stay in the middle and it might be great. But why would you even want to chance that? You found yourself in a situation and good thing, you know what I'm saying? You found yourself out of that situation. Be thankful for that. You don't really know what's going on in their relationship. He may be just putting you off because he may really be digging on this lady. Who knows? Sometimes you got to just leave it alone and not try to figure the shit the fuck out because it ain't meant for you. You know what I mean? There have been many situations where I wanted to tell somebody something, but you know something? Listen, bitch, mind your motherfucking business and worry about you and what the fuck you doing. Don't worry about nobody else in a situation because sooner or later it's going to come to the light. And as bad as you want to help a motherfucker out, you got to just realize, listen, I'm going to just shut my motherfucking mouth, okay? That's all I'm going to do. Now, like I said, your friends, they could just be right. And I totally can agree with them on that. Some people may not agree with me on this situation, but it's sooner or later going to come to the light. And it's going to be meant for her to know. Shit is meant for you to know when it is. Maybe it ain't meant for her to know right now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's not her time. Maybe from you leaving her, excuse me, maybe from you leaving him the fuck alone might be her time to shine and he might change his ways. And because I say this is because, well, he's only got that one girlfriend. So we think we don't really know, but for the time being, you know what I'm saying? So listen, let me tell you something, Marie. Sometimes as hard as it is, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to worry about ourselves. Worry about you. Worry about what the fuck Marie's going to do. Worry about you. Because ain't nobody else had your back but your friends when they told you that it's not your place and you should mind your business. And your friend, she's got a point. So for those of you who agree or disagree, I don't care which one the fuck it is, just leave your comments below. Okay, and we're going to move on to the next. Okay, so this one is a very interesting one. I think they're all interesting, actually. Hi, April. My name is... Can I just say I love your YouTube channel? Because she didn't change her name. I'm going I'm to change her name for her. Her name is going to be Alice. Okay. Hi, April. My name is Alice. Can I just say I love your YouTube channel? You uplift me when I'm down. Make me laugh and also help me appreciate the little things in life. So I am a black female in my 20s that just so happens to prefer white men. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I have no solid luck on meeting, meeting any that want more than just the physical with me. I have been single for going on five years now, and I'm starting to feel like I'll never find love and happiness with a white man. In your opinion, do you think dating would be easier for me if I prefer black men? Do you think I should give up on the idea of finding love with a white man? Any advice you could give to me would be greatly appreciated. I am just so stuck right now. I'm starting to think that it's me and that I'm not worthy of love or that I or that love ag along with a family marriage, etc., is not in the cards for me. Wow. So that really sucks. So Alice is in her 20s and she's just more or less attracted to white men. She says that she has dated them. She's been in, I, may, I guess they're very short relationships or whatever. But come to find out, these relationships are only ones where the guy wants, the white guy wants to, you know, hit it and run. Basically, just hit it and run. Um, and these are only white guys. So now she hasn't been in a relationship in five years. You know, she's been single for ongoing five years. And she's wanting happiness. She's starting to feel like it's not in her cards. And should she just prefer to, would dating be easier if she was to date black men? She just doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to be alone. But she doesn't see anything happening with dating white men. The reason why I said it was interesting is because of those reasons in general. You know, some of us get really stuck in what type of race that we like, meaning black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese, etc. And with me, it was this. I only liked black guys and they were only dark skinned black guys. You know, like Idris Alba, um, Morris Chestnut, um, Tay Diggs. Um, I can go on and on and on. Okay. However, or the guy from Power is not dark skin, but he still is fine. You know what I'm saying? Ghost. 
But you know, in that bracket, I would like, you cannot be light skinned. Let's just put it like that. You couldn't be light skinned. I didn't find light skinned men to be attractive at all. And I really still don't, but it is what it is. But you get stuck in what you like, and there's nothing wrong with liking what the fuck you like and you're attracted to. That's part of life. But we start getting stuck in our ways, and then we feel like, you know what? This is all I want. She only wants to date white guys. That's because that's what she's attracted to. Me, personally, after the whole situation of my divorce and getting rid of that asshole that was here, I was like, I'm done with black men. I'm done with them. I'm not dating them anymore. And I started dating the white guy. Lo and behold, I just thought he was the cutest thing ever, but he just was not for me, okay? And it had nothing to do with the color of his skin. It had to do with his attitude. So when she said to me in the email, should she, would dating be easier or dating a black man? What makes you feel that way? Because there are some black men that are a total bunch of assholes. Trust and believe. I know very well of this. Okay. Very well. So dating might be easier. Um, I don't really find it to be any easier. They come in all shapes, forms, and races, meaning men can be assholes in every freaking race. There are Chinese men that are assholes, Korean, Japanese, Thailand, Hawaiian, Italian, uh, Mexican, Puerto Rican, black, white. I'm just saying the list can go on and on and on of these different races. Bottom line, every man in any race can be an asshole. So I don't think that dating a black man is going to be any easier than dating a white guy. It Sometimes it got to, it got to do it has to do with where you're looking for these guys, looking for love in all the wrong places. Y'all bitches know that song, looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love. You know what I'm saying? That is the title of the song, and it is so right. You be so desperate or, wa or wanting to be loved by someone that the first person that comes along is like. <sighs> And it don't even have to be a physical place when he says looking for love in all the wrong places. You could just be out and about and this motherfucker comes up to you. It's because you were looking. You were looking so motherfucking hard that your ass slipped into a fucking hole and nobody could pull your ass the fuck out for a minute. Wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong time. Okay. Wrong place. Wrong time. Wrong time. Wrong place. Either way. So I don't really think it has anything to do with their skin color. I think it has to do with you as a person. You are looking in the wrong places. And sometimes when you look too motherfucking hard, you find the wrong one. You go for the physical look on the outside. And in the inside, he is a fucking maggot. Okay? His insides are being eaten alive by fucking maggots because he is a physical walking maggot. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And it's like with me, I like the guys that are not too short, but I have my preferences. Nigga, if you ain't wearing no Tims and no jeans and no baseball cap, then I don't know what to do with you. Like, I like for you to wear a suit and tie and go to work, but please don't wear your church pants all the time around me because I don't think that shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? I just, that's, that's my preference. Now, he could be black if he want to. He could be white if he wants to. He could be Chinese, Puerto Rican, whatever. I don't really, it doesn't matter to me anymore because I have found many white men attractive, many Chinese or Korean guys attractive, black, Spanish, whatever you want to call it. They come in all races and shades. But the whole mere point fact is it all depends on where you're looking. So I wouldn't just say I want to just be with a white guy because white is just a skin color sweetheart it's just a skin color yeah sometimes that skin color could get you real good motherfucking credit and real good shit but okay in, in actuality it's just a skin color white Caucasian American that's what they are Okay, whatever, but it's still a skin color Koreans their skin color is the same thing you know what's so funny that you'll look at a person and you'll swear that they're black just because of the way that they act um, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, where they live at or whatever because, or you, excuse me, you can swear that they may be Hispanic or black because they wear a certain thing or how they act. And then when you find out that they ain't even black at all, not even 1%, you'd be like, damn, well, your skin is was white like a white person or your skin is like tan like a light-skinned black person 
you'll be like, I'm not even black though. I'm white or I'm Italian or I'm this or I'm that. You know what I'm saying? Like I have met people where I totally thought were a black person because they were like my skin color. And she was like, I'm not even black. Oh, okay. Well, or people have met me and are like, oh, you look like you're a Puerto Rican. You are because of my skin color. No, I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm black. Okay. I'm a black person. Part of me, but it's, you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's white is a skin color. You know what I'm saying? You have to go with what a person is on the inside. You got to look at them for who they are, not for what they have and what they have is white skin. You have to look for them for what they are. You may be missing out on some really good love, really good loving from a Hispanic person, from an Asian person, from an Indian person, from an African American person, or even a Caucasian person. You may be missing out on that because you are so into, I want to find love with a white guy and a white guy only. I want to know why is this? Is it because the color of the skin attracts you? Or is it because the Caucasian attracts you? Now, when I say the color of the skin, meaning it's white, that is a color, that is a shade, okay? Anybody can have white skin. Any race can have white skin, meaning an African can have white skin because they can be albino. Uh, African American can have white skin. A white, a Caucasian can have white skin. A Hispanic can have white skin. And you know what I'm saying? You understand the gist of it. So are you attracted to the color, the shade, or are you attracted to the particular race, Caucasian? And if you are attracted to a Caucasian, is it because you feel like being with a white man is going to get you ahead in life? Being with a white man is going to get you to where you need to be in life? Being with a white man is going to get you those really cute kids in life? Being with a white man is going to get you some good credit in life what is it or being with a caucasian man excuse me i should have said is it those reasons or is it because you like the shade so there's only like two really 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 reasons why you know what i'm saying now listen i asked this question because being with a black man being with a korean man being with a hispanic man being with an indian man being with um a pakistani man them too could get you good credit Cute ass motherfucking kids get you where you need to be in life. Bottom line can get you to be successful. But if you're looking at it for those reasons, for those particular reasons, then honey, you're looking at it for all the wrong reasons. Okay. Sometimes as a couple, we have to build each other up and work together to get those things in life. You ain't just going to find somebody that has it already and wants to give it up just that easy unless they desperate and looking for love in all the wrong places too. Okay. Bottom line. I look for love and one thing that I don't look for is I'm not, listen, I'm not about to be fucking with no broke ass dude. Meaning nigga, if you ain't got no job, you ain't got no place to stay. You sleeping on your mother's couch. You got a bus pass in your pocket. Your bank account is on negative, whatever number you is, and but you fine as hell. And your is that big. I'm not looking for that. Okay. And you just be like, oh. but, that shit is not attractive, okay? You fine as hell because there's a whole lot of other fine motherfuckers out there. I'm not even going to say brothers because that would just stereotype it to the black people. But there are a whole lot of other fine men out there with the same package size, okay, in every race that has it going on for themselves, okay? I'm just saying, I don't want no broke ass dude, okay? I'm not saying you got to be rich. And the reason why I say this, and I tell you this before many times, is because I work hard for what I have. And I would really appreciate to be with somebody who works just as hard as I do for what they have. And I don't have to worry about they broke ass trying to take what I got. I'm more than willing to give people, but we have to do this together. I'm not going to just keep giving your ass and you ain't got nothing to give in return. I'm not saying I want to take everything from your ass neither, but it's a 50-50 thing and we have to work together now working together means we both coming to the table with something but nigga if you ain't got shit when i say shit not even a pot to piss in and a window to throw it the fuck out of how is you going to work with me so i really feel like you are looking for love in all the wrong motherfucking places and you have to stop worrying about the shade and worry about the mentality and the person that they are and then you'll find love but when you are so desperate to look for love and you know that you haven't been in a relationship for five years then when you find somebody you kind of gravitate towards 
towards them because you just want love so bad. The first thing that you have to do, and I say this many times, is love yourself and just take care of you and the right person is going to come along. It may not be in your time span when you want it the fuck to happen. Just like for me, I want love too. And yes, I want to have friends and hang out with them. I want this now, but honestly, it ain't when it is. My time will be when my time. It is given to me when it is given to me. And the same thing goes for you. Five years may be long and it may not be long. But those five years that you have to yourself, maybe hopefully you better yourself and you do more for yourself and with yourself and you can better yourself. It's to find the right person for you. That's why when I broke up with the last relationship that I had that I got rid of, you know what I'm saying? I bet it myself financially, mentally, physically, whatever. Because I was saying to myself and I was focusing like, you know what? I ain't worried about no man. I'm going to get me together. It's about me. I'm going to do more videos. I'm going to do better videos. I'm going to spend more time with my kids. I'm going to make more money. And this is what the fuck I ended up doing. You know what I'm saying? I still ain't worried about a relationship with a man. Like if I find the right person for me, then of course I will give it that chance. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not desperate for a man and woman physical relationship. What I wanted was to have more friends, you know what I'm saying? So that way I can get out more and I wouldn't be such an introvert the way I am. But my time will come and I'm more receptive to that now after my weekend and after the experience that I just had. I do say, you know what, I'm tired of being in the house, but I enjoy being around my children so much that they consume everything that I do and everything that I do is for my children. So those are the best people for me to be around. You know what I'm saying? So yes, with that being said, I feel like you're looking in the wrong areas. Give more time to yourself. When you are more physically and mentally ready for stuff, it will come to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no fucking guru of life or anything. I'm just a person who has dealt with life and who has had things happen in their lifespan to where I'm able to be able to see certain things happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not one to go to as a counselor. I just share what I have and my past experiences with you guys so that you can relate to it and you can use it as a tool. So being that I'm 43 years old and I have been through enough, I'm able to see like, listen, this is what worked for me. This is how I've gained more. This is how I've gotten more knowledge of such. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what the fuck it is. Look for love is first looking for within. Looking for love is like making sure that you as a person is good to go. Bottom line, point blank, period. There's really nothing more I can say about that. So the most that I can tell you is this. You will find love, but just don't only give white shade an opportunity or white Caucasian. Either way that you look at it, it's not really helping you out any. If you're only looking for Caucasian white men for their 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 credit scores or, or whatever the shade, then you yeah, you are just like you're not giving yourself much to go off of. Give yourself the sky is the limit attitude. Give yourself that attitude to where like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to give other people an opportunity. This this black guy who is black as night right here might be the right one for you. Everything that you want, everything that you need, everything that you are may be what's within him. Okay? I'm just saying. So, yes, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. I know it was really short, but like I said, I do have so much stuff to get done. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the evening, I really want to go see the Emoji Movie with my daughters. So, I want to just end this now. And, you know, just listen to what I'm saying. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I didn't bore you too much. And I will see you in <clears throat> a soon-to-come real talk. And on that note, I love you guys. Peace and blessings. I was about to end this, but then I realized oh, I forgot something. At the end of this video, you will see a music video, which is the latest music video by my son, Hollywood Shumpo. So make sure you check it out. Check out his SoundCloud, his Instagram, his Facebook. I'll post everything below. This is one of his latest. He does have another, which I'll try to remember to link below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video along with the music intro. Make sure you show support and love to my son because he's working so hard to get them coins. I love you guys and stay diva and divalicious. Okay then. Okay then.
Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. Percocet, Percolese, pull me up. More Hennessy, Ray Charles, got the keys. Whip the baby like a Billy Beast, huh? Percocet, Percolese, Ray Charles, got the keys. Pull me up. More Hennessy, whip the baby like a Billy Beast, huh? Whip the baby like a Billy Beast. Go on, babe, like I'm Japanese. Bring y'all, bitch, come in threes. You is mac with no fucking cheese. Love packs smell like Guyanese. I'm a Titan. Tennessee, fuck minutes, nigga, please. I don't real Gucci like overseas. Bitch, niggas, they gon' gossip. She want the rings like signing. I'm cuffing, I don't lock it. I hit it in the block, I've been wildin'. I ain't in where to be honest. I pull up for the wallet. James Harden got a rocket. Tell that bitch, nigga, stop it. Percocet, Hercules, pull me up. More Hennessy, Ray Charles. Got the keys, whip the baby like a Billy Beast. Huh. Percocet, Hercules, Ray Charles. Got the keys, pull me up. More Hennessy, whip the baby like a belly beat. Huh. Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Percocet, yeah. Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Hercules, Percocet, Percocet, Tucker Chicken, KFC, Belt Beyond, Louis V, Two Eyes, I'm a fucking T, that's Fendi, Gucci, Percocet, Blue Cheese, Percocet, Blue Cheese, Percocet, Blue Cheese, Blue Cheese, Blue Cheese, Blue Cheese, Blue Cheese, Hercules, 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 Hercules,